All rise. Please reconvene. Be seated. Maintain order. Oh, thank you. Did Renee bring me? I mean, did um, Yvonne? She should have had three copies. Good morning, everybody. I think Ms. Jensen's supposedly outside, so. But it looks like it's slowing down a little, so that takes some pressure off. Some pressure. Hello. Okay, we're back on the record state of florida versus ashley MacArthur, case 17 cf 5844 state is present defense attorneys are present with um, the defendant miss jensen anything before we get started today ma'am uh, mr barry barasset no, mr john barasset no ma'am we're good miss MacArthur. all right i've got that since i believe ms wilkerson is a dna expert i have that language about expert witnesses and I was just going to read it at the beginning of the day but I just thought I would just read it before all the experts testified just read it first thing and then we've got several people who might be qualified as experts okay all right I think our jury is here they are excellent about being on time which is most appreciated and once my group can organize themselves over here if that's likely to happen we will get started. Reminder to everybody, I feel like we've been together, most of y'all, all week. A reminder, do not react. Do not be texting. Uh, do not be recording. Uh, please don't be disruptive. The media is free to record and do their thing. Everybody else, no. And if you can't follow the rules, you're going to be told to go for the day. And that will be that. So. All right, we have a couple of people who are missing their notepads. Jerry's in about strong. All right, and for the, everybody have a seat. And for the record, defendant is present with counsel assistant. State is present. Good morning, everybody. Remember Monday? Doesn't that seem... No. <laughs> well, that's my point. Doesn't that seem like a long time ago? And you didn't know anybody, and now y'all are a team over there. Um, I appreciate very much that everybody's on time. Getting 15 people on time makes a huge difference, so thank you for that. All right, let's start off with my question of the morning. Um, it's not going to be who's your favorite judge. We'll skip that one this morning. But how about, uh, has anybody done any research on the case? No. Has anybody uh, talked to anybody about the case? Has anybody been trying to connect to streaming and see what other people have to say about the case? Uh, has anybody had somebody send you a clip or something that you need to tell me about, even if it wasn't your fault? No. Anybody been going to Brit Road or anywhere, Rain Tree yesterday? No. Is there anything anyone needs to share with me that would affect their ability to be fair and impartial? Okay. Mr. Um, I'm going to read an instruction. You'll hear this again at, when we do our final instructions. Today you're going to hear from expert witnesses. Expert witnesses are like other witnesses with one exception. The law permits an expert witness to give his or her opinion. However, an expert's opinion is reliable only when given on a subject about which you believe him or her to be an expert. Like other witnesses, you may believe or disbelieve all or any part of an expert's testimony. As far as our schedule today, I think we're back on our normal schedule, which is I'm going to say that we're going to try to have lunch lunch at 11.45ish um, or so today. So we're back on more of a normal schedule. Ms. Jensen, will you call your first witness of the day? Jennifer Wilkerson. 
Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say I do. I do. All right. You may have a seat. Pull up to the microphone. State your name, and you can move it towards you if you want. Like move it. We've had some odd. We've had people looking at the screen, so it's there. You go. State your name and spell your last name, please. Jennifer Wilkerson. W I L K E R S O N. You may inquire. Ms. Wilkerson, where are you employed? I'm a crime laboratory analyst with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement in the biology and crime scene sections. How long have you worked for FDLE? I started in January of 2006. What are your specific duties with FDLE in the biology section? I examine items of evidence for the presence of body fluids like blood, semen, and saliva, or I'll occasionally be asked to swab an item for skin cells left behind from the person that touched or wore that item. I will then take that on and develop a DNA profile, and then I will compare that DNA profile to other DNA profiles in the case. What is your educational background? I have a bachelor's degree in biology from the College of William and Mary. I have a master's degree in biomedical sciences from Eastern Virginia Medical School. And I have a master's degree in forensic science from Virginia Commonwealth University. Do you have any specialized, specialized education or training in the field of forensic DNA analysis? Uh, yes, with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, I completed their approximate one year training program in serology and DNA. Have you received specialized training in the use of statistics, <clears throat> excuse me, to interpret the significance of a DNA test result? Yes. <clears throat> Do you perform proficiency testing? Yes. How often? I take two proficiency tests a year in the DNA section. Have you personally performed the procedures involved in forensic DNA analysis? Yes. Approximately how many samples have you worked? Around 16,000. Have you testified as an expert in DNA analysis before? Yes. Approximately how many times? Around 150. What is DNA? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and it's your genetic blueprint. Kind of like the blueprint of a house is going to tell you where your bedroom is, the kitchen. DNA is ultimately going to tell you what color hair you're going to have, what color eyes, how many fingers and toes, and you get half from your mother and half from your father. Why is it important in forensics? It's important because a DNA individual is unique to them unless you're an identical twin. And therefore, it can help identify a subject or link a, link a subject to a crime or free an innocent person. Did you receive evidence in the state of Florida versus Ashley MacArthur? Yes. And did you specifically receive a buckle swab from Ashley MacArthur? Yes. What is a buckle swab? It like looks like a long Q-tip, and it's used to swab the inside of your cheek in order to get that person's known DNA profile. Did you receive a rib bone from Taylor Wright? Yes. And were you able to obtain complete DNA profiles for each of those individuals? Yes, I was. I'm going to talk about a Ford F-250 first, your January 16th, 2018 report. Did you receive a pair of work gloves from um, the rear center floorboard? Yes. Okay, and what did you do with those gloves? I swabbed the inside of the gloves and the outside of the gloves on separate swabs in order to determine the person that was wearing them and who it may have been, who of that person may have touched from the outside. And did you do any sort of, um, I guess, chemical test first? I did check the gloves for the presence of blood and it was negative. Okay. And then what was your finding as to um, those gloves? The outside of the gloves gave me a complex mixture. This means there was too many people in the mixture for me to use it, so the results were not interpretable. The inside of the gloves had limited DNA results that were not interpretable. Did you also receive some swabs from the rear driver's seat? Yes. <clears throat> and what was your finding as to those? Uh, I again checked that for the presence of blood and it was negative. I then ran the DNA on them, and I developed a mixture of at least three individuals. Uh, and, uh, then I did that comparison to the rib bone from Taylor Wright, and she was excluded as being part of that mixture, and I compared it to Ashley MacArthur, and uh, it failed to dis uh, demonstrate statistical support for inclusion or exclusion. Therefore, basically no determination could be made of whether Ashley MacArthur was in the mixture or not. 
Did you also receive some swabs from the front interior passenger door from that F-250? Yes. And did you receive some swabs from the front exterior passenger door handle? Yes. Did you also receive some swabs from some nine millimeter rounds that were found in that F-250? Yes. And did you receive some swabs from a Glock magazine? Yes. As well as some swabs from some nine millimeter rounds from the Glock magazine? Yes. Okay, and if you will just go through each of those in your report and uh, report your findings. The uh, swabs from the front interior passenger door, I developed a mixture of at least three individuals. When I compared uh, Wright and MacArthur to that, both of them were excluded as being part of that mixture. From the swabs from the exterior passenger door handle and the swabs from the Glock magazine, I developed limited DNA results that were not interpretable. The swabs of the nine millimeter Luger round uh, the loose round and the ones from the magazine, they actually got dropped at a step of the DNA process called quantitation. There was just not enough DNA for me to even continue with the process. So let me ask you this. If we know Ashley MacArthur and Taylor Wright were in that vehicle on September 8th of 2017, how is it possible that their DNA is not detected? There are a number of reasons that could be. Uh, over time, uh, in a car, Florida especially, it gets very hot. It can denature or destroy the DNA. Over time, also, people will wipe away the DNA that was there and leave their own DNA behind, or someone could have actively cleaned it and tried to wipe the DNA away. The fact that these swabs were taken approximately six weeks after they were known to be in that truck could that, could that also affect your ability to get DNA? Yes, that could be the reason that they weren't found if they were known to be in that car. I want to talk about your Brit Road reports, which are going to be January 16th, 2018. Did you receive some, did you swab a tote bag or did you receive the actual swabs? I swabbed a uh, black and white striped tote bag. Okay, and what was your finding for that tote bag? I took two swabbings of the tote bag, uh, one of the interior of the bag and one of, from the handles. The interior of the bag, I had uh, limited DNA results that were not interpretable and my swabbing of the handles actually got dropped at that quantitation state because there was not enough DNA for me to continue. And what about um, your findings for a mortar bag, the interior of a tote bag, a towel, a blue jacket, um, hammock hooks and cord, pleats on hammock, and a gray jacket? Uh, for the uh, mortar bag, I took two swabbings of the mortar bag as well. I did The bag was open, so I swabbed the open area where you may have had to cut it or rip it to get it open, and then just the entire exterior of the bag where you would have to touch it to carry the bag. And both of those gave me limited DNA results that were not interpretable. Uh, for the striped towel, um, I took a swabbing of the entire towel. I obtained limited DNA results that were not interpretable. Uh, for the gray jacket that had a picture of a lobster on it, I took a swabbing of the jacket for the wearer of the jacket. And I developed a partial female profile. I compared that to Taylor Wright and Ashley MacArthur, and it did not match either one of them. And then I swabbed a uh, blue Land's End jacket and uh, I tamed a limited results that were not interpretable. Uh, the hammock swabs, um, I tested them for the presence of blood. They failed to give chemical indications for the presence of blood. The DNA results were limited and not interpretable. And there was also a swab of the pleats of the hammock. Um, that one gave chemical indications for the presence of blood, but the DNA results were limited and not interpretable. On your second report from January 16th, 2018 for Britt Road, did you receive a yellow and gray raincoat? Yes. Okay. And what did you do with that raincoat? I tested it for the presence of blood, and it had two areas on the back that gave a weak positive indication for the possible presence of blood. So I took cuttings from both of those areas, plus I swabbed the raincoat for wear, 
and all three of them had so little DNA that it got dropped at the quantitation state. Those are my questions. Thank you, ma'am. All right. I think it's Mr. Barry Barossett who's going to ask you questions. And remember, if it's yes or no, just answer yes or no. Yes, sir. Wilkerson, how are you? Good morning, good. With your background, you're familiar with why law enforcement collects evidence, are you not? Yes. In other words, they look at evidence in critical places of a crime scene, such as maybe a barn or where a body's found or during the search of the house or any possible weapons, and they evaluate that as possibly having critical evidence for examination, correct? Yes. And in this particular case, you've got quite a few exhibits for that purpose, did you not? Yes. And to begin with, you had the buccal swab of Miss Taylor, our client, correct? Uh, Miss Taylor, I got a rib bone. Taylor Wright. Oh, excuse yeah. me. I, I confused me. And our client is uh, Miss McGarthy. You got a buccal swab of her, is that correct? Yes. And uh, the purpose of that is to compare it with any other possible evidence that the law enforcement has collected. Is that true? Yes. And your job, you cannot select what they submit, but you have to rely upon what they submit in order to conduct your examination. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Now, did you also uh, have occasion to examine some sh black shorts? Yes. Okay. And when did you examine those black shorts? Um, I issued the report on January 16, 2018. And where was it identified that those black shorts came from? They came from a basement. Basement. Okay. And uh, what examination did you do with respect to the black shorts? I examined them for the possible presence of blood, and they were negative. Now, once you examine them for blood and you find negative results, do you still examine them for any DNA? It depends on the nature of the item, whether it's needed or not. I know you said sometimes you can take a swab uh, or of, of material, correct, or some other thing to see if there's any touch DNA? Yes, I can. Would you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what touch DNA is? Touch DNA is skin cells that are left behind. Uh, for instance, when you touch like the steering wheel of your car, as you drive it, you'll leave skin cells on your steering wheel. That would be touch DNA could also be touch DNA on the handle of a firearm, is that correct? Yes. And uh, with the appropriate evidence, you can develop a profile, can you not, sometimes of people that have touched items? Yes. Because DNA is very sensitive, is it not, if you have a quantitative amount to examine? Yes, it can be. Mm -hmm. I understand that you also examined the purple hairbrush. Do you recall? A uh, ha hairbrush was submitted, but I did not examine it. Uh, do you know why it was submitted? It was submitted to be used as a known standard for Taylor Wright. And the reason you didn't use that was because you already had a known standard for Taylor Wright? Is yes, I developed a complete profile from the rib bone, so the hairbrush was not needed. With respect to the gloves that you examined, I think it was in one of your reports, 24A, uh, it said the outside of the gloves demonstrated presence of a mixture of three or more donors. Is that correct? Yes. But because they were mixed or complex, you weren't able to develop anything? Yes, because the there were so many people that I couldn't interpret it or compare it to anybody. Also on the driver's seat, apparently, there was a mixture of approximately three donors and at least one male contributor on the rear driver's seat. Is that correct? Yes. You could tell that at least one of the contributors that, of uh, the DNA on the, on the rear driver's seat was a male, correct? Yes. I think Taylor Wright and uh, my client were excluded, were they not? 
uh, Taylor Wright was Ashley MacArthur, no determination could be made. And again, I think we've seen a picture of a uh, yellow raincoat. Is that the one that you uh, had to process? I would imagine so. The raincoat I received was yellow. Yellow and gray? Yes. And that was supposedly found, according to your report at least, that's identified as a 2201 Brit Road. Is that correct? Yes. I know in your report you said it exhibited the sus suspected blood. Why do you say suspected blood? The test that I use for blood, it's a presumptive test, meaning it doesn't confirm blood, it just tells you that it's probably blood, because okay. there are other things that will make it turn positive other than blood. So it could be something other than blood? Yes. And in fact, you developed no DNA profile on that, is that correct? Yes. Ms. Ms. Uh, Jensen said to you, uh, sometimes you don't get a profile because something could be wiped down or, or, or time can pass. Is that correct? Yes. But also we do know that uh, DNA has been developed uh, years and years later on different items, have they not? Yes, usually when it's a body fluid, but it can happen, yes. And also uh, many times they exclude people in a rape case uh, that have already been convicted because of the presence of uh, DNA from somebody else, correct? Yes. Now, looking at the interior door panel, again, it said it, this is the interior passenger side. Again, it notes three donors and at least one was a male contributor, correct? Yes. And this is all from this uh, 250 F1, F250 pickup truck? I don't believe I was told exactly what vehicle it came from. Okay. All right, thank you, Ms. Jensen. And in this cl case, uh, my client was excluded as a contributor, is that correct? Even though you had a mixed DNA profile? Yes. That was on the, I think the, uh, let's see if I, exhibit six, was from a Glock magazine. Uh, I thought we were talking about the interior. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> exhibit six, I'm sorry. Exhibit six was a Glock. Swabs from a Glock magazine. The swabs from the Glock magazine had limited DNA results. I didn't compare it. Well, I'm, I'm looking here. Oh, okay. Let me see here. On that Glock magazine, it says Taylor Wright, which is exhibit D1 was her profile, I take it, and Ashley Britt MacArthur, exhibit 41, are excluded as contributors to the mixed DNA profile. From the interior passenger door, yes. Which is exhibit six. I, I guess I'm, I'm confused because I'm looking at exhibit six at the top of that. And on the preceding page, it also says exhibit six swabs from the Glock magazine. Oh, uh, FDLE item six. Yes. Is the swabs from the Glock magazine. This can be a county exhibit six. Is okay. the swabs from the interior passenger. Okay. Door. With respect to 19, then the Glock, you were not able to get anything. Is that correct? It had limited DNA results that were not interpretable.
You also receive one bag of Versa Bond mortar from the bedroom closet. Uh, did you make any analysis of that? Yes. Was that for DNA? Yes, I swabbed it for touch DNA. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, do you know whether or not that was ever sent anywhere to be processed to determine whether or not that concrete matched the concrete uh, at the site? No, I have no idea. So basically, of all the evidence that you received for your DNA analysis for the presence of blood, you found nothing that connected my client, Ashley MacArthur, uh, to these items. Is that correct? That's correct. I have a moment. No further questions. Thank you. All right. Ms. Ms. No Is she completely released? She's completely released. Yes, as well. Okay, you're completely free. Don't discuss your testimony. Call your next witness. Same as Jeff Brown. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say I do. I do. All right, have a seat. Pull up to the microphone. State your name and spell your last name. Jeffrey Brown, B-R-O-W-N. You may approach with the court reporter. Please. You may proceed. Where are you employed? The Pensacola Police Department. What do you do for the Pensacola Police Department? I'm currently assigned to the Criminal Investigations Division. Um, within that division, I primarily work on computer-based crimes. And what are your actual duties? Like, I mean, what do you do? Um, with the computer-based crimes, of course, I do handle in kind of investigations that are digital-based. But on top of that, I do the digital forensics for the Pensacola Police Department. How long have you um, been in law enforcement? Been a sworn member for approximately 16 years um, with the Pensacola Police Department and then about two and a half years before that as a non-sworn cadet. Let me take you to September 18th of 2017. Uh, as part of your duties at that time, did you download and extract cell phone data? I did. And how, how would you do that? Um, the program that we use at the Pensacola Police Department is Celebrite. It's a, um, a software that we can extract various data from various cell phones. What training and experience um, did you have at that time to uh, work with Celebrite? Um, I've been certified uh, with Celebrite to be able to extract uh, various data from them. Okay. And in September of 2017, were you provided a cell phone from Ashley MacArthur? I was. Did you download the contents of her cell phone with Cellbrite? I did. Now, were you able to actually access the download? I was not. Okay, why not? On iPhones, particularly with Cellbrite at that time, um, you had to have the password to the iTunes account, which protected a backup. Okay, and was it with, did Ms. Car Ms. MacArthur provide you with an iTunes password? Uh, she did. And what happened with that? It was unsuccessful, the, the first one that she provided. Okay. Did she provide other passwords? She eventually did, um, I believe upwards of five or six different, either variations of one that she gave me or different ones, and none of them were successful. Okay. What did that end up doing to the download? It, I wasn't able to view the data that was on there. Okay. Now let's fast forward to a few weeks ago. Um, did you try to access the downloaded content again? I did. And what happened? 
Um, at that point, um, I was able to open the downloaded file uh, with a newer version of Celebrite. And how do you explain not being able to get into it back then, but you were a few weeks ago? Basically, like most cell phones, um, they go through various updates. Uh, Celebrite is a software company and does no different. So back then in 2017, um, it wasn't able to access a file system from a, I guess you could say an operating system on an iPhone at that time. Fast forward two years from now, it was able to access a file system that was operating on the operating system back then. Now, when Celebrite, Celebrite downloads the cell phone contents, does it produce a report? Yes. And are you able to change or alter that information? No, I can only filter through the report but not change. Okay. And what type of information do these reports contain? It contain uh, text messages, call logs, locations, um, physical activities. You know, iPhones will monitor your, your you know, physical activities. Um, it can monitor that, photos, videos. Uh, various data from various apps and so forth. Okay. Can it also at times um, retrieve deleted information? It can. Would it be fair to say that not everything in this report is going to be relevant to a case? Correct. Exhibit, I believe, 139. Now, Detective Brown, just for record purposes, um, let's go through states 139 and just identify what the pages are. Is page one the identifying information for that phone? Correct. Okay, and does it have Ms. MacArthur's 850-712-2299 on the first page? Yes, it does. Okay, and then pages... Um, the next two pages are 1960, 1961. Are those her activity for 9 8 2017? Yes. And then pages 1964 through 1965, um, does that show some of her activity on September 9th? It does. Okay. On pages 4720, 4721, and 4722, are those text messages between um, Audrey and Ashley MacArthur? They are. And then the next 22 pages, starting at 49.25 and ending at 49.86, are those various text messages between Taylor Wright and Ashley MacArthur about um, going to a bank? They are. Okay. On page 7041, uh, do those show images of some firearms um, that were sent via text? Yes. Okay. And then on page 7044, does that show another firearm that was texted? Yes, it does. On page 77, or excuse me, 7077, do those show some images of um, a motorcycle? They do. Okay. On page 7333, is there talk about um, some firearms between Brandon, or just as a Brandon and Ms. MacArthur? Yes. On 7335, is there a text message um, between Cass and Ms. MacArthur about looking through her car? Yes. Okay. On 7395, is there a conversation about a Kimber with Brandon on September 11th, 2017? There is. On 7396, is there a conversation with Ms. MacArthur and a Brandon about a gun on September 11th, 2017? There is. On 7460, is this um, a conversation from Ms. MacArthur to Brandon about a truck being at the pool room? Yes. And then on pages 7482, 7483, 7484, are those conversations between Ms. MacArthur and a T? about meeting at Babes on September 7th, 2017? Yes. Let me ask you this. On the far right column, there are some places where it says yes. Yes, 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 yes on certain text messages. What does that mean? 
without looking at the cover sheet, I believe that's going to be where they were deleted at. And it says, yes, those were deleted, but they were able to be recovered. On page 7791, is there a conversa or a text between Ms. MacArthur and Brandon about a bike? Yes. And on 7793, is there again a conversa or text messages with Ms. MacArthur and Brandon about a bike? There is. All right. And then on page 25914, at the top, is there an image on August 10th, 2017 of a check? There is. And on the last page, 24661, is there an image at the bottom of some cash? There is. Okay. Judge, I do not intend on publishing the entire packet, but I would like to show certain exhibits. Sure. Page and does this just show um, Ms. MacArthur's cell phone information? Yes, it does. This is going to be page 4721, and at the very bottom, the last two texts, can you, can you read what those say? It's on, I think it's on September. I can't see in the dark. Yes, I've got it. Okay, what is it? The, the last blue one on the left, and then the last green one. So the uh, blue one on the left says, why were you winded when you called me? That was at 9-8-2007 at 1.08 p.m. And the response was, I picked up a saddle. And that again was on 9-8-2007 at 1.09 p.m. 2017. 17, sorry. This is page 7041. And if you look at line gosh, line 32 if you click on this um, blue link did it produce an image give me one time get into sure. it now. yes it did and is that on can you read the day i can't read this one uh the uh, time stamp is 9 14 2017 at 6 17 p.m Line 32. Oh, 32, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's, uh, nine, uh, the timestamp is 9 14, 2017 at 7 45 p.m. Okay. And then is this the image that comes up um, for that line number 32? It is. Okay. And then on line 33, is that the same time and date, or approximately the same time and date? Yes, it is. Okay, and then when you click on that blue link, did an image come up? It did. And is this the image that came up for line 33? Yes. Okay. Now onto line 34. It looks like there are a number of um, images. Correct. Okay. And when you clicked on those links, did some more firearm pictures come up? Yes, they did. And for the record, this is line 32. Image 4293. <clears throat> this is image 4292. And this is image 4293. All right, on page 71, at the bottom, if you click on that blue image, did that also pull up a firearm? It did. And is this the uh, firearm for that image? Yes, it was. This is page 70, 7077, line 399 up here. If you click on that blue image, um, did this truck and motorcycle come up? It did. And then on line 402, right here, did, it, did another image of that motorcycle come up? Yes. Let me go back. What's the date on that? For the uh, truck and the motorcycle? Yes. Line 399. 
would have been August 17th, 2017 at 12.18 p.m. This is page 259.14. This top image, or this top line, which is 142.11. Um, if you clicked on this blue link, did it give you a bigger picture of this image right here? It did. And is this that image? Yes, it was. And then on page 24.661, if you clicked on this image at line 33.19, did it give you a bigger picture of this little image right here? It did. And what is the date, or what is the uh, capture date on that? August 17th, uh, 2017, at 10 o'clock a.m. And is that the uh, image for that? It was. Those are my questions. Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. John Barasset is going to ask you questions, and if it's yes or no, just answer yes or no, okay? Yes, ma'am. Don't volunteer extra information. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Going back to getting into Mrs. MacArthur's cell phone, uh, you also went over to her residence on Raintree Drive, correct? Yes, sir. And Mrs. MacArthur allowed you to have uh, access, I guess, they had some sort of home computer there? Correct. Uh, and she assisted you in getting on her computer, correct? Correct. And gave you full access to her computer, correct? Correct. To make whatever attempts to get into her cell phone, correct? Correct. The, uh, how long were you at the residence that day? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe an hour, hour at the most. Was your interaction or conversation with Mrs. MacArthur recorded in any form or fashion? I did not record it. I'm not sure if Detective Gigliotti, who was with me, did or not. It was very brief, my interaction. Okay. Sorry. Yes or no? Yeah, sorry. You're starting to get it. <laughs> When you use the cell bright on Mrs. MacArthur's phone, does it gives you everything on the phone? Not everything. And that's probably that's a poor question. And does it? How far back does it go? Time or, or, or date wise? It depends on the phone. Okay. In this case, how far back did it go? I'd have to look at the full report to to see the, the farthest back. Okay. You don't have the full report with you. No, the full report several thousand pages. All right, upwards maybe 28,000, something Could like that. Be. All right, and it certainly went back, can you say, well before September and August of 2017, correct? Yes. Further back than July, June of 2017? Yes. Did you um, take the time to look at the material in let's just say the spring and early summer or summertime of 2017? I, I don't remember going through that. Could you have gone through it? Sure. Okay. Is, and that was probably another poor question. Is it fair to say when you were looking through this information, there were certainly many times that Ashley MacArthur took photographs of firearms other than the couple times that were shown here this morning? Yes. And is it fair to say there are certainly times Again, we're talking prior to August and September 2017, where, let's back up, you also able to get uh, searches, like most of us probably use Google, at least I do, and you can do searches, correct? Correct. And you had the ability to look at all of her searches during whatever time period you wanted, right? Correct. And there was nothing of any of those searches that caught your attention as it relates to what we're all here about this week, correct? Correct. Um, do you recall, though, that there were searches just on general interest of firearms going back again, spring 2017, summer 2017, just looking at firearms? I don't recall. Can I have one moment? Okay. No further questions. Ms. Jensen. When you went to Ms. MacArthur's home, and tried to get in her computer or whatever. What, what, was, what was the problem there? 
the passwords that I, were, that I was given to access the iTunes were still unsuccessful. Thank you. Those are all my questions. All right. Is he completely free to go? No. Okay. Then do you want him to remain outside? No, he can leave the courthouse, but he is subject to recall. Okay. Mr. John Brosset, is that all right? He leaves, but he's... Of course. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So when we call, answer the phone. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. And it would be today, I think, so. Okay. Okay. All right. Call your next witness. Jennifer Spires. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say, I do. I do. All right, have a seat. Pull up to the microphone, and you can pull that microphone down a little if you want to. There you go. State your name and spell your last name. Jennifer Spires, S-P-I-E-R-S. -E you may inquire. Ms. Spires, where are you employed? The Florida Department of Law Enforcement. What do you do for FDLE? I am currently the Senior Crime Intelligence Analyst Supervisor. Okay. And how long have you been with FDLE? I've been at FDLE a little over six years. How long have you been an analyst? I know you're a supervisor now, but how long have you been an analyst? Uh, I've been an analyst uh, about 13 and a half years. And what are your specific duties? At FDLE, we're a state agency. We assist uh, not only our own agents, but other law enforcement agencies with investigations. So we do things such as background investigations, financial record analysis, cell phone record analysis, um, basically anything that's needed over the course of an investigation. What education and training do you have to perform your duties at FDLE? I've uh, got a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Um, I've had hundreds of hours of various uh, analytical training, uh, about 200 hours specific to cell phone record analysis. Okay. Approximately how many times have you analyzed cell phone records? Uh, I've analyzed probably 300 to 400 different phone numbers. Can you describe the basic process when a cell phone makes a call? So uh, when you dial cell phone, you dial a phone number, you're connected to typically the closest tower with the best signal, where it's then routed to a switch, then it's routed to another cell phone. If you're calling another cell phone, it's routed to the tower closest to them with the best signal, or if it's a landline, then it would go through that. Now, you say a cell phone will typically use the closest tower with the strongest um, signal. Are there factors that come into play as to which cell tower is used? There, uh, there can be the things that affect not using the closest tower, such as uh, weather, uh, tall buildings, uh, terrain, could be tower overload. You know, if there's a lot of people using one tower, it might route to the next closest. Um, the could, tower could be down for maintenance. So there's a number of factors. Would you expect to be in the downtown Pensacola area and using a tower in Milton? No. Would you expect to be in East Milton by the San Rosa County Sheriff's Office and using a tower in Cantonment? No. Do cell phone companies keep records of when calls are made, the towers that are used, and things of that nature? Yes. And then are law enforcement agencies able to get those phone records? Yes. Do the carriers provide um, the cell tower locations upon request? Yes. Okay. And when you receive those records, does the cell carrier put them in any sort of um, special order to help you analyze them? No, they have their own format. Okay, so what do you do when you receive the information? Well, we do have some programs that help us uh, where we can load the phone records and it'll output a map just for quick process. But then we, I will go through and manually look at the original records and then plot the tower locations myself. Okay. 
and the, the programs themselves use kind of a, a cone that is a little misleading. It, it, do they not? Yes. Okay, and you don't use those? No. Okay. What types of information do these cell phone carriers actually provide upon request? They, it's uh, typically like number dialed, um, calling number, called number, the date, time, duration, um, direction, uh, whether it was a text or a phone call, um, and then sometimes there can be a lot of other tower information on there. Okay. Did you review cell phone records in this case for 850-712-2299, Ashley MacArthur? as well as 954-520-0310 for Taylor Wright, 850-208-8019 for a James Hayes, and 850-530-2225 for a Brandon Beatty, and then lastly, 850-378-6298 for a Brandon Beatty. Yes. Okay, and were you asked to focus on September 8th and September 9th of 2017. Yes. Did you take the uh, information from the phone carriers and pr and plot them on maps? Yes. How do you like? How do you actually do that? <laughs> so, um, <coughs> not every record has uh, tower location. So the records that had tower locations, I took those. Um, the tower has a number, and then there are typically sectors or sides to the tower. Um, in this case, there are three sides to the cell phone towers. So the phone company will provide the tower number, which correlates to a location, and then it'll provide the sector, and then the sector has the, it provides the center of that sector. So I kind of plot a third of a circle, if you will, to show that side. Okay. Now, are you able to tell the jury exactly how far or how wide or, or how many miles that a cell tower covers? No. Okay, and why not? That's, uh, the phone company owns that information and they don't release it. And um, do the phone companies provide tower locations for texts? Some companies do. Um, in this case, there are no tower locations for text messages. All right, they'll be received over the objection already argued at the bench. And Judge, may I publish? Is this just showing the phone records that you analyzed in this case? Yes. And B is just showing the date? Correct. All right. This map is very busy. <laughs> Can you explain for the jury what this page, which is going to be C, as in cats, shows? So I was asked to plot the records for these two numbers, the 712 number and the, this 954 number, uh, for 9 8 2017 between 11.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. So here we have, um, I've indicated in green any records for the 712 number, and then when there's any blue squ uh, blocks here, those are for the 954 number. So here between 11.30 and 5, starting out, the first call is around 11.49 a.m., hitting here at a sector near Tower Ridge Road and Nine Mile Road. Uh, this is kind of, uh, this is the center of the sector, and this is just to give you an idea of that sector, that side. Um, so we have those four that were here, and then the next one is up here at 12.05. Um, it's going to be on this sector that kind of faces southwest. And then between 12.10 and 1.27, um, we're between these two sectors. 
uh, towers and sectors right here. Uh, do you have Brit Road on this? Uh, Brit Road is right there at the top. Okay. Um, and then down, uh, we come back down here, uh, 144 p.m., we're back on this sector and tower, and then 146, we're down here near um, Eight Mile Creek is right here, Pine Forest Road, um, we're on this tower and sector. This is, <clears throat> excuse me, map D, what does this show? So this just continues uh, the time frame. Uh, 154 up here at Old Palafox, uh, near 29, Highway 29 in the interstate. Um, and then down here, uh, 157, we're near Airport Boulevard in the interstate. 159 is over here near Tahar um, and 9th Avenue. And then lastly, 204, 207, this is a tower near the airport. And then did, were you asked to plot 3961 Rain Tree Drive? Yes. Now there are no, um, there's no phone activity for the 954 number during this time frame, correct? Correct. This is map F. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. This is map E. <clears throat> and what is this showing? Um, e, this is going to be um, still continuing on in this time frame. We have, uh, for the, still for the 712 number, we have uh, 225 and 225. We're down here um, kind of in the Brownsville area, uh, going up near Mobile Highway, um, Fairfield Drive, um, 226. We are still in the same tower, just a different sector or side. Um, and then at 228, we're up here near uh, Michigan and Mobile Highway. And again, no activity for the 954 number? No. This is map F. What does this show? Um, F, this is going to be, again, the first one on this map is 2.40 p.m. Uh, back over here near, uh, the, this is Pine Forest Road and the next exit after Pine Forest Road at 2.40, and then from 2.45 to 3.08, we're uh, back up here on this tower off of uh, Beulah Road, going towards Muskogee. Uh, okay, is this right up here at the top? Uh, yes. Okay. And then 3.32 and 3.33, we're on this tower, and then just two different sectors. And again, no activity for the 954 number? No. <clears throat> this is map G. We have uh, 3.46 p.m. We're back up here at um, near Palafox and Nine Mile Road um, on a south, kind of southeast facing sector. Um, then we go uh, four o'clock is back down here near Brent Lane towards the interstate. And then 4.41 to 4.50, we're on the tower by the airport again with the southern facing sector. This is H. So this is um, a different phone number. Okay. It's for 208-8019. Um, between this time frame, there were only two phone calls that had towers, um, and they were both on the same tower, just different sectors. This is map I. I, um, this starts out for these two phone numbers, 530-2225 and 378-6298 for the same time frame on September 8th. Um, I, the phones were, a lot of them were in the same location, so uh, these were the calls for the 378, and then these were the calls for the 530, um, all on this tower down in Brownsville. This is Jay. This, these are uh, two more calls for the 530 number at 1239 and 1242. Uh, same tower, just uh, different sectors. This is K. This is, again, just a continuance of these two phone numbers. All of these records were on this tower up near uh, Palafox and Nine Mile. Uh, the southern facing uh, sector. And then we have uh, these calls were over here near Ashland, Detroit Boulevard. Um, down here you have Longleaf Drive. This is Highway 29. 
and then uh, 410 to 459 is up back up on the tower at uh, Palafox at Nine Mile, just a different sector. Okay. And were you asked to plot 8600 Pensacola Boulevard? Yes. All right, on to September 9th. This is just um, page L. This is M. What does this show? This is back to the, the original two numbers, the 712 and the 954. Uh, on September 9th from 7.15 a.m. to 10.15 that night, uh, the first calls that day were 7.25 to 8.05 on the tower here off of Beulah Road. And is this Brett right here? Yes. This is N as in Nancy? So 9.37 is the next call for the 712 number uh, down here near uh, Tahar and 9th Avenue. And then we have 9.39 and 10.17 is the, air, the airport tower, um, two different sectors for the, both of those calls. Then we have 10.21 is up here off of Creighton near Lanier. And then over here back towards uh, the I-10-10 interchange at 10.44 and 10.47. Okay, and no activity for the 954 number? Correct. This is O. O is just a continuance, 712 at uh, 1059. Uh, this sort of uh, northwest facing sector on this tower down here off of uh, Garden Street, or I'm sorry, Cervantes. And then 1102 to 1205 here, the calls were on the same tower, just a different sector. This is P. This shows a 12.39 uh, p.m. call for the 712 number up near uh, Highway 29 and the interstates. And then a, the, another set of calls up here at uh, Old Palafox and Nine Mile. This is Q. Uh, Q, we're uh, back out here on Beulah Road, 145, 157. And then over here off of Kingsfield Jacks Branch at 155 and 159. Okay, and again, this is, I just lost it. Right here at Red. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is R. R, um, we have 240 to 259 uh, up here at Palafox and Nine Mile. And then 301, 302 is back over here near uh, the interstate and uh, 29. S as in 310, we're at Creighton and Lanier, and 312, 339, the uh, tower and sector by the airport. This is T as in Tom. So uh, again, green is for 712, blue is going to be for 954. Um, at 511, 512, uh, tower up here near Loxley, Alabama. And then we have the five, for the 712 number, we have 520 to 634 on this northwestern facing uh, sector. And then at 553 for the 954 number, it's on the same uh, tower and sector out there in Robertsdale. And then uh, 638, same tower in Robertsdale, just a different side. And then 641 and 643, uh, for the 712 number is coming back uh, east through Elsinore and Seminole, Alabama. And was this the first activity for the 954 number that you've seen in a while? Yes. This is you. Uh, so on this map, uh, at 711 p.m. for the 954, 954 number. Uh, we're out here near uh, Eight Mile Creek, uh, Nine Mile Road area. And then for the 712 number at 731, it's back over here near Palafox and Nine Mile. This is V. This is going to be for the uh, 712 number. We have 811 to 931 is back on the tower near the airport. Uh, with this kind of southern, southeast facing sector. 
and then for the 954 number at seven, I mean 817 and 820, uh, same tower and sector at the airport. Okay. And, and this plot, this little plot is for 3961 Rain Tree Drive. Yes. This is W. This is going to be um, up here, kind of near scenic in the interstate, uh, 934, 935. Uh, these are all again uh, for the 712 number. Uh, 943 is still kind of in the area of scenic in the interstate. And then over here, 947 uh, is off of Avalon Boulevard in the state and in the interstate. And then uh, 1012 and 1014 p.m. is back at uh, Nine Mile in Palafox. Oops. Okay, so that's the plot for 
overlap each other, correct? Correct. Let's assume for this question that someone is in a particular sector of a particular tower. You, as an expert and with the information you have, you can't say where someone exactly is in that sector, correct? Correct. The jury heard um, a interview of Mrs. MacArthur on October 19th, 2017 with officers from the Pensacola Police Department, uh, Will Height and Gigliotti. And at one point they were going through some records with her and mentioned, well, if Taylor Wright made this text to you, then she had to be sitting in her your bedroom right next to you. From the information and being an expert um, in this area, could you ever tell anything like that? That someone was that close? No. Okay. So that wouldn't be a true statement? No. And it's certainly possible that a phone, well, let me, let me get the word possible out. It, it certainly happens that a phone is picked up by sectors that a person is not even in, correct? Correct. And as we already said, they can use a tower that's not the closest to them, correct? Yes. So to boil it down, what you're saying is that, let's back up, you got these phone records of these individuals the state went through, and what you're saying is that these are the sectors, excuse me, these are the towers and sectors that on the phone records I looked at, correct? Yes. Not that any of these people were in these certain areas, correct? Yes. May I have one moment? No further questions. Ms. Jensen. When the 954 number and the 712 number are both using a tower in Robertsdale, Alabama on September 9th, do you remember that, the map and the phone calls? Yes. Either those phones are together or the people who own them are together. Fair to say? That's fair, yes. Thank you. Is she completely released? Yes, ma'am. Is she? Can I please have one follow-up question? All right. One question. <laughs> All right. Didn't you just tell us that you can't say that the just because they're using the same sector, they're using the same tower, doesn't mean the phones are actually in the same sector and tower? I want to get one question. Isn't that what you just told us? It's not absolute. All right. Thank you. All right, Ms. Jensen, I'm going to let you have it. Do you want to follow up? No, ma'am. Okay. All right, is she completely released? She is completely released. Is she yes, ma'am. You're completely released. Um, if you have an exhibit, leave it there and don't discuss your testimony, okay? Let me see counsel at the bench without the court reporter. We were just up here talking about scheduling. Um, we're in good shape. Don't worry about that. What we're going to do is go ahead and give you your morning break um, and... Uh-oh, I got the blankets coming out again, unfortunately. I thought we were better this morning. Um, we're going to be back at 1025. Notepads, pencils, leave them here. Don't discuss the case. I'll see you all back at 1025, okay? Thank you. All right, Mr. Barossett, I was talking, Mr. Barry Barossett at the bench about scheduling, and all I can say is an estimate, but I would hate for us not to have lunch here and be kind of at a break where we couldn't do anything. So that's why I was suggesting, you know, 11.15, 11.20-ish. It's just the best I can do, a uh, guesstimate. And he, the doctor may have to wait a little bit, and then you may have to buy his lunch but I'll leave you to work all that out, okay? okay thank you. All right, thank you. I'll see you all in about 15 minutes. Thank you.